Welcome to Whitetail Rendezvous Podcast. This is Bruce Hutchin, host and executive producer. Each week, you will hear tips, techniques, strategies, and personal stories from some of the best and funniest whitetail hunters in North America. Hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you do, tell a friend on social media. If not, tell me and I'll make it better. Thanks for listening, folks. This is Whitetail Rendezvous Podcast, episode number 391. Welcome to another episode of the Whitetail Rendezvous. This is your host, Bruce Hutchin, and we're heading to Arizona, and we're heading to St. Louis, Missouri. How are we going to do that? Well, Skype's a magic tool. Anyway, we're going to visit with Jesse Paulson, and Jesse is the son of Mark Paulson, who started Wilderness Athlete, a supplement country a company many years ago, like 13. And Jesse's going to share what it takes to put the right fuel in your body so you can be a wilderness athlete. Switching up back to St. Louis, we're going to connect with Nick Lappy with Fit the Hunt. Fit the Hunt is simply that. You have to get your muscles in tune to whatever you're going to be doing. If you're climbing the Rockies, if you're down in Louisiana swamps and you're fighting the cold in Canada, or you're simply walking 200 yards to a tree stand, you need to be fit to hunt. Both these gentlemen are going to have some tips, techniques, strategies, and a couple of stories here and there to share. Welcome to an interesting episode of Whitetail Rhino. What's so interesting? Where we're going to include fitness and what we put in our bodies. I've asked wilderness athlete Jesse Paulson to be on the show, plus Nick Lapp from Fit the Hunt to be on the show. And we're going to talk over the next 45 minutes, maybe an hour, about why it's important for you to be fit to hunt and become a wilderness athlete. Gentlemen, welcome to the show. Thank you, Larry. So, Jesse, let's start with you. And I know uh, Mark started uh, Wilderness Athlete some 13 years ago. So tell tell the listeners what you've seen in the growth of Wilderness Athlete and why you've had that growth. Yeah. Uh, well, to start off, you know, Wilderness Athlete started 13 years ago, like you said. Um, my dad, Mark, being a, a strength coach, he's, a, he's been a strength coach for 25 plus years kind of saw that the industry did not have a a company that had or a, a product that were dedicated to helping improve uh, hunters' lives and, uh, you know, just their overall fitness levels. Um, and so he came out and knowing his, knowing uh, the people that he knows, he met a lot of top formulators, uh, top researchers and scientists, and he, he started Wilderness Athlete and it's really grown uh, from 13 years ago and it's with the fitness, uh, how it's, how it's become with, with people getting more and more into hunting as we, as we've seen in the last couple of years, it's really, uh, helped prepare people for, uh, all types of hunting. So. And when you think of an athlete, I know, um, a lot of people have played college sports, high school sports whatever sports, and they don't think as as going out to the athlete that you qualify. They see people on TV, they see this, they see that, and they don't, they don't realize it. How do you get over that? I mean, how do you help people get over that? Yeah, I think, I think that, you know, like we were saying, everyone's a, everyone's an athlete in their own, in their own right. Uh, you know, you have guys that are working, you know, industrial, they're, they're concrete work. They're doing, they're doing whatever you have, you know, the, your typical athlete who's, you know, say a football player, he's, uh, you know, he's going, you know, five second plays and he's got like 20 seconds rest, 30 seconds rest. Uh, and then he does that for about an hour. Uh, and that's, that's his intensity right there. And that's how much his reps and that's very intense. But then you have a guy who, just a regular Joe, I mean, working blue collar job who is picking up rebar, he's walking, he's doing all these things that he's climbing up as a lineman, journeyman, he's going up, up poles. Um, they're getting a lot more activity than you think they're going to have. Um, and treating your body like an, like an athlete, we should treat each and every one of us to treat our bodies as, like, as an athlete. 
uh, and getting the right nutrition in, into your body is really in the beginning. That's where it starts. Um, and that's where kind of wilderness athlete comes into play and, and fit to hunt comes into play. Um, preparing your body with, uh, you know, the right, nu- the right nutrition, the right supplements, and then being able to uh, prepare your body for whatever is going to come. So whatever type of hunt that you're going to have, whether that be a waterfowl hunt or whitetail sitting in a stand or, uh, you know, you're a Western hunter and you're, you know, hiking 12 miles a day. Uh, it really doesn't matter. Thinking about that and, you know, we're going to get it um, into actually what wilderness athlete does, but, you know, it's, it's fuel for our bodies. That's what I like to tell people. And if I'm eating pizza and cheese curds and drinking uh, lining kugels, uh, most of the year, and then for nine days, I decide I'm going to be a wilderness athlete. I'm in a world of hurt. Guys, your thought on that? Anybody, you want to repeat that get, question one more time? Sorry. Sorry. Yeah, so I'm sitting in Wisconsin, and, you know, I work. I work a job, but I also like my line of Kugels. I'm eating pizza, and I'm eating cheese curds. And then, you know. I realize hunting season come up. I'm going to hunt for nine days, gun hunt. Uh, and then I wonder why I can't do anything. I can't even drag out a deer. So, yep. you, you know, what's that all about? And what that's about is that you didn't take care of your body for one thing. Oh yeah. I mean, it's um, definitely a lifestyle uh, choice that you have to make. And, and there's a level of discipline that comes with it that, um, you know, hunting, for nine days and getting after it really hard for nine days. And then all of a sudden the other, uh, you know, 356 days of the year, you're sitting on your butt doing nothing. I mean, it's, you know, you don't use it, you lose it is, you know, it's just about as cliche as I can get with it. But, um, you know, it's, it's definitely, if, if that ends up being a lifestyle that you choose, yeah, that nine days is not going to be very fun. Yeah, I mean, if I want, and I want to kind of add to Nick and what he said, um, because really, what you're, what we do when we're hunting, we're looking for an enjoyable experience. First of all, we're not just looking to, you know, kill an animal or or get get you know get something get the job done. Really, it's really just about even if I'm out in the wilderness or I'm out you know hunting, I'm really looking for an enjoyable experience. And when you're huffing and puffing and your heart rate is going through the roof. And that tends to not be an enjoyable experience for a lot of people. And, uh, you know, Nick, him being the, you know, the over at Fit to Hunt, you see these guys come in. Um, I see, I've seen a lot of people come in to, uh, you know, start their training regimen. They have no idea what, uh, what to, what to start with. And, uh, they really, we got to start them off even just with a, just, just basic, basic things that uh, are going to help them with just balance and mobility, and just, um, just getting, just hiking, um, which is probably the most functional thing that you can do. When you talk about the, the most functional thing they can do, let's just start off um, or continue on this discussion. We got fuel, and then we got fitness, and you know, how do you marry the two together? And for a lot of people. How do they do it? How, everybody's busy. Yeah, I mean, that's the mantra of the day. I'm too busy. I'm too busy. I'm too busy. Well, you're too busy doing things. You fill up your day. I get that. Your schedule's filled up. You got to go here and go here. So how do they make an appointment for themselves to get up at 530 or before they come home from work or after work? And I don't recommend that after sit down, and eat food to go work out. Um, your thoughts on that? Since I threw that out there, I I don't think that's conducive to a good workout myself. Well, it's definitely uh, definitely not conducive to a good workout. But one of the things that over at Fit to Hunt that we we try to get our clients to understand is the importance of a schedule and a plan. Um, you know, if you have a schedule or you carry around a planner or you have you write everything down over the course of your day, um, then instead of going throughout your day and just reacting to everything and trying to figure out, do I have time for this? Do I have time for this? Do I have time for this? You have it written out, you know, verbatim 
how your day is going to go. Um, obviously, we all have those surprise things that pop up. So knowing that um, maybe you don't try and fit everything into a day. Obviously, there's things that are going to be more important that you absolutely need to get done. Maybe there's things that you can stretch out over the course of a period of days. But the key is to actually have a plan. And that is where, um, you know, not only just a workout regimen goes, but I'm, I know Jesse is probably chomping at the bit to get in on this because in order to have a good fitness plan, there's got to be a good nutrition plan to go with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, just uh, on top of that, uh, what we've done is uh, we've partnered with Fit to Hunt. Um, we're actually coming out with, uh, we've talked with you, Bruce, about the 20 uh, day challenge workout plan. Um, and what that's doing is that uh, that's blending the two, having the most, uh, having the proper nutrition to be able to perform uh, a, a workout and to have proper nutrition to give you the energy to actually want to work out. Uh, a lot of, a lot of times I see people, they just, they don't have the energy and it's just sucking the light. They, 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 they can't, they don't have the energy to, to work out much rather just, or the energy to go by through their daily activities, much rather work out uh, on top of that. And so starting off in the beginning, like, you know, starting off with a good nutrition, starting off with, a, you know, a, a, a package or a program that can get you going, um, with, with muscle management, uh, is, is the key, um, over at wilderness athlete, uh, you know, we have the 20 day challenge package, which I talked about that really is not a weight loss program. Um, because technically when you're losing weight, you're, you're losing muscle along with fat. And that's one thing you don't want to do. Um, what we're, what we're doing is we're targeting, you're targeting the fat and helping preserve the muscle so that you can have that energy so you can uh you can focus on uh you know those those workouts that you're trying to get to uh and stuff like that and uh that's what nick has kind of put together with the uh, the workout program too um that we have uh, that we're about to come out with that wilderness athlete as well i hope this is making uh sense to you folks because from personal experience, um, and I'll just keep this real short. You've heard you've heard this before in a number of shows, different ways. But let's just focus on what happened to to Bruce. Bruce uh, in uh, 2015 June realized that my hip was going, and I went to therapy. I went to this, and I did everything I should. And they they're kind of humming and hollering, and you know it, it just didn't get fixed. So I got myself in shape enough to go hunting away tails for 30 days and it and it hurt so much so i stayed out the first day of gun season came off the woods and it was really really cold and i said i'm gone and i had the right clothes on i said i'm out of here because i can't hunt anymore so i came home and so that's uh november get a hold of doctor and so february 9th i had my total hip replaced okay then I always put in for permits because you never know if you're going to draw them in Colorado. I do a sheep tag. So I had from approximately May, June, I think it was closer to April. I, I don't remember. I was working out. I was I was doing some things to get to get back. But then I, ha- I was motivated. So before my sheep hunt, I did over 100 miles on the ground on a bike. I climbed the Manitou Incline. Did all this stuff, and so I was ready to spend 22 days in the mountains where I walked another 100 miles. And I was uh, pretty much about 212 pounds. Probably that's the weight I played in college and stuff. Back in the day, I couldn't play that. <laughs> I was too light. But having said that, I made a decision. That's that's all the last 30 seconds, 90 seconds about. I made a decision that if I wanted to hunt sheep, I had to be in the best shape I could, and I had the I had the I just had to get back to where I needed to be so I could climb the mountains and chase the sheep. So I was motivated. If you're not motivated, then it doesn't matter what Jesse says or what Nick says, you're not going to do anything. So along with it, how do we get people motivated to change? Ooh. Hey, that's, <laughs> I mean, I guess that's, 
probably the the toughest problem that we have is is changing somebody's mindset into you know taking either frustration or anger or uh you know a a will to to work and trying to get them to see and use it um one of the biggest motivators for some people is you know at some point in time you know whether it be you know something health related that pops up where they end up in the hospital or uh, they're on all sorts of medications um eventually there comes a time and i'm sure jesse has has seen this as well where people just get sick and tired of you know being unhealthy they they get through a point in their life where all of a sudden they realize I, i'm not healthy i don't eat right um i don't work out i weigh you know, way more than I should, or I can't move as well as I should. And, and it just gets to a point where they turn frustration and anger and all those feelings into their own motivation. Now, a lot of times because of what we do, because of what Jesse and I do, um, it is our job to try and get them to see that. And one of the best ways is obviously talking with them, you know, being more than just a trainer or being more than just, you know, a nutritionist or a dietitian or a coach. Uh, it's getting on their, on their level with them and essentially getting them to say it. The sooner we can get them to say it, the sooner people will start to realize, oh man, like this frustration makes me want to quit. But if I just push through maybe this a little bit of frustration, or if I change the way that I set my goals and achieve my goals, maybe this frustration will start to wane a little bit and we can, you know, really start to move into a healthier lifestyle. It's funny you, you say that, Nick. Um, I actually, yesterday, uh, I walked into Radio Shack. They're having a uh, blowout sale. And then my wife dragged me over there to try and get, you know, you know <laughs> some deals on stuff. And uh, the, so I started talking with the, the, the manager there. Um, and a uh, smaller guy, he's about, about five, six. Um, I tell him I you know, work for a nutrition company, and he, he tells me he used to weigh, uh, last year around that time, he weighed about 340 pounds. Uh, and he, now he's looking, he looked like he was, you know, 150 pounds. And uh, I, I, I was amazed at, at just what he did. And I asked him, like, wow, what made you want to want to change? Like, what, what got you to the point where you wanted to, you know, take it? Uh, into your own hands, and he he kind of said what you said, Nick. That he just kind of got sick of, uh, you know, feeling the way he was feeling, and he didn't know that there was a better feeling out there um, than the way that he was with the drinking five cokes a day, and uh, you know, having to you know, rely on all, all these uh, medications and stuff like that. But um, you know, it's it's just getting sick and tired of being the feeling the way that you're feeling, and uh, that's 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 uh, a trainer's job, and that's really what kind of Nick and even, even myself we enjoy, I enjoy uh, helping people uh, find that their motivation. And even though it's different for a lot of people, but um, one of the best things I heard was that results are the biggest motivator. And so even if it's very small in the beginning, uh, you know, whether that be ten or fifteen pounds, um, you know, doing the Starting off and seeing results is really catapults people towards even even bigger results, and that's what kind of the twenty eight day challenge um, and it was meant to do uh, for wilderness athletes. That's been the most popular package that we've ever had. Is that it really catapults people into a, a health conscious lifestyle and creates great patterns and great habits for people. Um, to really start off and, and, you know, with fit to hunt is then creating those workouts in the beginning uh, to really create habits again for people just to see, you know, very, very incremental uh, results is, is probably the, the key um, in the beginning. Let's switch it up a little bit. Both you guys are our outdoorsmen. You hunt. So let's talk about fit to hunt. Nick, on your side, how being fit, that's your job. I get that but helps you become a better hunter? Well, I mean, there's, there's a lot of answers to that question. Um, you know, being from the Midwest, um, you know, a lot of times you're not 
hiking around. You're not going up and down mountains. I mean, granted, there are places where, you know, obviously there's a little bit of elevation change and you're going to be, you know, hoofing it up and down a little bit. But um, one of the biggest reasons to stay fit to hunt from my perspective is the work that goes into the hunting season here in Missouri. You know, you have a lot of opportunities very close by to hunt deer, ducks, doves, turkeys, you know, you name it. If it's a game animal in the Midwest, you know, there, there's a good chance that you're not far from being able to hunt it. Um, now the biggest thing is the work that goes into it, whether it's, planting a food plot, whether it's clearing trees, whether it's clearing a ditch to be flooded um, for duck season, you know, the, the work starts when the previous hunting season ends. And even during the hunting season, there's always work that can be done to make your hunt better. Um, so even though we sit in tree stands, climb up in a tree and sit for long periods of time, much like you, Bruce, um, that period of time in between where there's real hot days out on the farm, and there's a lot of time spent lugging heavy equipment or tree trunks or um, stumps or anything around, those are the kind of days that we try and stay fit to hunt for. Whether it's working on somebody's hydration, whether it's getting somebody to be able to, be able to balance in a duck marsh. You know, when you're walking through water and, you know, say you're hunting on public land, like I do a lot, you know, you got. 50, 60 pounds of decoys and gear strapped to your back and you're walking through waist deep water. That in itself is a workout. If you're not prepared for something like that, you are going to have a miserable time. So being strong, um, one of my favorite quotes is, you know, people always say lifting weights and, and doing exercises like that is dangerous. But I say, try being weak. Being weak is the real danger because when you're doing some of these things out on the farm and, and in a duck marsh, or even if it's walking the 300 yards to your stand and you have balance issues, you know, it can, it all has its own, um, its own issues. Um, and so that's why we try to keep people fit to hunt is we want to try and make them strong in the most scientific way we know how, depending on your fitness level, you know, there's so many different changes that, fit to hunt can make our programming can make to one make you comfortable at the gym and two make you more successful while you're hunting yeah. and Nick, you're not even yeah go ahead about just long term you, you i mean you're you're preparing these uh individuals for you know you, you are preparing them for the long term and the quality of life because it's it's really you know it's, you want them to become strong and you want them to be able to, to hunt for this this next season um but ultimately you're improving their quality of life so that uh, they can hunt harder for longer and be able to you know extend their 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 hunting seasons you know out to where they can you know get as many hunting seasons with their grandchildren their their children their grandchildren uh as much as they can and, and again that that's a part of what you do too Oh, absolutely. Yeah, we take we take pride in um, when people come to work with Fit to Hunt, it's not just throwing weights in people's hands. You know, we take a, a very different approach to where we assess movements to try and make some of the most basic movement patterns, whether it's even getting up from a chair, whether it's taking that first step up onto a ladder rung. You know, we try to retrain your body to do it in the most efficient way possible so that, you know, as we progress through exercises, through workouts, through programs, um, you know, you start to get to a point where you realize, oh man, not only am I moving better, but now it's a lot easier for me to progress through some of these movements so that down the line, you know, we've brought you through an entire range of movement patterns to the point where you're doing things that you never really thought possible. Uh, now, obviously, sticking with the plan is huge and making sure that it sticks um, and that, you know, like Jesse just said, you know, we want you to be able to not go for just like a four-week program or an eight-week program or 12. We want you to be able to um, eventually just keep going, make it a part of your life to the point where you can hunt for just about as long as you please. <laughs> no, and I like what you put, um, Nick, in your bio. Um, and Jeremy's talked about that. Jeremy Kerger is the, 
the gentleman that started uh, Fit to Hunt, and he's been on show a number of times, but functional movement system. And so everything do is functional, whether I'm climbing a rock or sliding down a scree slope or, or just climbing into my ladder stand uh, 15, 20 feet in the air. It, it's all functional movement. And you said something important, you know, Sometimes just getting to our stand, we're doing a heck of a lot of motions. We're we're reaching, we're stretching, or extending our legs. We're walking real small. We've got small brushes, lakes, critters, logs, whatever in our way. Oh, absolutely. And it's an obstacle course, and people don't realize that, especially in the dark. If you go in the dark, well, and we go ahead. We uh we definitely try to think like depending on where people are hunting the, their geographical location you know we're thinking worst case scenario I mean, if you're walking up a hill or even if you're walking across a cornfield if you've ever done that after a really hard rain the walk itself will just tire you out especially if you're focusing in on trying not to slip or um, you know you've you're trying not to, you know, sink in the mud and you got to be able to pull your foot out without losing your balance and falling. You know, we always try to think what is the worst case scenario for each movement progression that we have, you know, in order to make sure that, you know, we're kind of hitting all our bases depending on, you know, wherever it is you might be hunting. Cause you know, everybody likes that, you know, partly cloudy day where it's cool and the sun's not too crazy, slight breeze. And, you know, the, the ground is, you know, maybe a little a little bitty bit wet and you know you you get to your stand and it's a great hunt but we've also all hunted in the conditions where you know it's sunny at one point and then all of a sudden you're driving out to your stand and you get there it cut loose cuts loose and pours and then you got you know possible flash flooding on your property because all the holes are filled up with water and all the mud is you know ankle deep you know it there's there's always going to be some sort of obstacle in your way like you said bruce that that um you know you have to either walk around it could be easy to walk around it or you can make it really hard on yourself to walk around it. but you know you never really get to a point where every hunt is perfect so that's kind of where we try to take most of our programming yeah before you jump in jesse i was just sitting here thinking about my friends who do mutters you know the obstacle cars through the mud and stuff i'm going man they should go goose hunting with me sometime <laughs> <laughs> but it's true oh yeah no it, it's really true. well one of the <laughs> one of the things you talk about goose hunting i had a situation like that the other day my buddy's truck got stuck you know people don't think oh a truck got stuck yeah you just try and get something underneath the tire and push it out trying to get something underneath the tire of a truck and help push it out that's a workout oh you know if i didn't if I didn't lift weights, if I didn't work out on a regular basis, trying to get a truck out of a ditch would be almost impossible. Yeah. It would just, it would just seem like, you know, you, there's no strength behind it. You know, you can't really, you don't feel like you can really help. And then all of a sudden your, your hunt is sunk figuratively and literally, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Jesse, your thoughts on what we just said about, you know, the challenge, you know, the mutters and they have, leagues and people guys and gals and you know i'm I'm glad they're doing it but in hunting that's sometimes their way of life i i know guys that have hunted in africa they're up to the chest when they're hunting for leche i hope i said it right leche or leche and they're in these swampy areas i mean you have to basically wade through the swamp to get to where you're hunting them we lose you jesse hello you hear me yeah you you there can you hear me yep yeah. about that yeah totally. no i just uh, I, I totally agree i totally agree uh um, oh both of you guys talk what you're talking about because i mean you go to you go down there and you're doing that's the most functional thing that you can do is is, is getting down the, those swamps and you're you know you're you working out muscles that you have never worked out before you're feeling muscles you never worked out and uh you know there's no amount of international chest day that can help you prepare for <laughs> that type of, type of workout. And, uh, you know, that's why Nick is so good at, I, I see him all over. He's got some great instructional videos on Instagram, um, on the functional movement and functional movement patterns. And you see a lot of guys, especially in, as, as the hunting, the hunting industry is starting to get kind of a bodybuilding type of vibe, 
uh, to it. And uh, honestly, you know, that doesn't really help you in the mountains. You know, 23 inch arm, 23 inch arms doesn't don't doesn't help you uh, pull back a bow uh, and hold it there for uh, you know you know 60 seconds while that bull is coming coming to you. And it really just it, you know functional fitness, functional strength is is the key. Um, and those different movements that, you know, deadlifts, um, single leg, you know, Romanian deadlifts and all kinds of these lunges and these, those, those, there's specific movements that are going to help you in the backcountry, help you in the woods. And then there's some that just aren't, are, are going to be almost detrimental, uh, to your, to your hunts. And I, I specifically have found that to be the case because I, and one of those typical guys who used to, you know, do back and by day, or I still do back and by day, but, you know, I focus more on my leg uh, and doing functional movements because I feel it when I go, uh, go hunting. Um, you know, I used to not be an endurance guy coming from the football world, coming from where you, like I said, you're, you're doing a, you know, 10 second burst and then you're, resting for 20, 30 seconds, um, to hiking, you know, up a mountain in Colorado at 11,000 feet and you're just dying. Um, so it's just, it's very, very different type of fitness that you're looking for. Yeah. And when I, when I think, you know, we're talking about some great things and before I go on, okay. Uh, Jesse, you start off and then Nick, you come back. Okay. If somebody says, man, or, you know, I want to, I want to get more information. How are they going to do that? Well, uh, for wilderness athlete, you just have to go to our wilderness Um, I've our, our Instagram, uh, we have some great videos. We're also doing some instructional videos of, on technique and different things to our, to our email list. Um, but going there is going to be the best, uh, for us. And then, um, we're partnered again with fit to hunt and using fit to hunt, uh, that discount code, um, you'll be able to, you know, try our products and, you know, of our local company. And I think that, uh, um, you know, for, for wilderness athletes, uh, part fit to hunt has been beneficial relationships for us, for sure. Nick? Yeah. Um, Getting in contact with Fit to Hunt, you know, it's um, definitely similar to Wilderness Athlete with Instagram. Um, you can follow us on Twitter. Um, you know, our website is fit the number two hunt performance.com. You can kind of get a little bit more idea of who we are, um, who works with us, and, uh, you know, where it is we try to take our fitness programs. We want to try and make sure that every single time that someone comes to us, they realize like it's not your average everyday program. We're not going to just, you know, bring you on and and say, Oh yeah, here's a cookie cutter workout that everybody can do. We try to make sure that everybody realizes that they have an importance to us and, um, uh, and that, you know, each person moves different and especially for whatever hunt you might be doing. So, Follow us on Instagram at uh, Fit to Hunt and then Fit to Hunt Performance dot com. How about Twitter? What's your Twitter? Twitter is at Fit to Hunt. No underscore or anything. Underscore between Fit. Underscore between the two in the hunt. Okay. And one thing, um, guys and gals, I'm going to be doing some some work with both uh, Fit to Hunt and and Wilderness Athlete coming up here um, real quick, and I'm going to be on their twenty. 28 day challenge or 20 day challenge, 28 day, 28 day challenge. And so we're going to work on some videos and stuff. And, um, most everybody knows I'm 70 years old, but that doesn't, that has no bearing because my mental process, my mental attitude is that if, the, if I need to get on the other side of that mountain, I'm going to do that. Now I can do it somewhat comfortably and not gasping and rolling on the floor thinking I'm having a heart attack at 12,000 feet, or I can just, you know, get up there, take a drink, um, hydrate all the way up, hydrate all the way down. When they get to the top, get out the glassing, have some tea, 
you know, whatever you need to do, get your jet boil out, do all these type of things. And that's what I do right now because I make it easy on myself. I enjoy the journey, but it's hard. It is not easy to get out in the wilderness and go. It just, and I don't care where you're at. It, I, I've been pheasant hunting and some of the stuff in, in the Dakotas and I'm going, geez, this is a workout. And that's exactly what it was. It was a workout. So having said that, I'm looking forward to working with both Pit the Hunt and, and Wilderness Ashley and, and, and sharing with that on Instagram and however we get it set up. We're going to we're going to share it. And of course, it will be in my post and what I do um, posting the shows. But because of that, I want to help motivate some people that said if that old guy can do it. I can do it. Or, gee, I never thought about it. I'm 60 years old and I, I never never really thought about it because if you're healthy it's unbelievable the stuff you can do both mentally physically and spiritually well the mental part is probably the biggest for just about anybody because more often than not you know we i've written a few articles and blog posts about, you know, negative self-talk and, you know, for some reason in this day and age, um, a lot of the talk that we give ourselves on the inside, you know, can directly, you know, affect who we are just as a person in our personality. And the sad part is a lot of it can be negative. And, um, we spoke earlier about, um, trainers being more than just trainers, being coaches, being, uh, an outlet for some of these people, um, getting past that mental part, you know, getting past the pride part, not even so much pride as in, you know, I can't work out at this gym cause I lift too much, but pride as in, you know, I am proud, a proud person. I may not be in the best shape, but so many more people are in better shape than I am. I can't work out at this gym, you know, and that goes back to the negative self-talk part is, the mental side of getting anything ready fitness wise for yourself or anything ready nutrition wise for yourself is going to take, you know, a little bit of preparation. Um, you know, you can't do it all at once. And if it doesn't work the first time, you can't go back into your head and just start saying, well, it didn't work that time. So I'm just going to give up. The mental side is, is huge in making any sort of difference in your life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, he Nick hit it right on the uh, the nail on the head, and the, the mental part, the most important part, because that gets you to the gym, and that's the first step. Um, for me, all I can say is for me, just getting there and and really just kind of, um, the like I said, the results are are the biggest motivator for me. Uh, in you know. Getting, getting situated and seen, you know, even if it's not aesthetic results, even if it's just increased energy, uh, if it's just mental clarity, um, you know, stress relief, that's, that's really what you have to, you know, getting, getting into that mental um, habit of doing, I feel, and uh, realizing that, you know, this is going to have long-term results. Um, even though, even if you're not benching 400 pounds, even if you're not, you know, you know, and I, I met Nick last week uh, or two weeks ago at the Pope and Young conference. And this guy is huge. He's 6'4". How, how much do you, I mean, he was 240. I'm like, man, I need to get in the gym a little more. And, you know, this is, uh, you know, I, it, everyone starts to compare themselves to everybody, especially in the day and age. I, I'm sure you guys, you know, Instagram, um, you know, it's, it, it's, it's, it's hard to focus on yourself and just focus on, you know, just little results. And instead of looking at the, you know, the CrossFit God, or even, you know, looking at Nick, you're looking like, man, I, I got to get my squat, my squat up, uh, or something like that. So I think just focusing on yourself and, uh, you know, being able to keep your, keep your, uh, your blinders on too. And I think Jesse's absolutely correct. I think another big thing is people that come in to see us realizing that we are still humans. We work in the gym. Yeah, we probably have a free membership wherever we're working, but we still have the same thought processes every now and then. 
you know, we still have the same feelings when we wake up in the morning, like, goodness, do I really have to work out today? But again, it's that constantly working on that mental aspect that gets us to not only compete with, I mean, essentially with other people, but with ourselves as well. And, and making sure that people realize like we're not anything special. We still go through the same mental process as everybody else does. Mm-hmm. You know, you think about that and you know, what we're talking about, people have heard, people have read, just get any tabloid off the shelf. Um, especially women magazines, you know, be fit in, in 10 days, you know, lose your, lose your stomach and, you know, fight in 15 workouts, do this, do this. I mean, everybody has an Alexa. There's companies out there that say, man, if you just, if you just eat my product for 20 days, you're going to lose 20 pounds or whatever. And mm-hmm. it just doesn't work because people do it for 20 days, but they don't have the support. They don't have the foundation. And then six months later, they're right back where they are. And I know that's true. I came off the mountain. I got my shoulder pinned. And so I went into a funk, you know, November, December. I couldn't, I couldn't hunt white tails, blah, blah, blah. You know, woe, woe was me in January, February came and then March. And I said, okay, enough of this. Cause I started putting from my pits permits again. And if I pull a goat permit, I know right where I'm going to be back at. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah and that's funny but at least i know that you know i i've got to do something and it's a lifestyle I like how you said that before nick or, or jesse it becomes a lifestyle because when you feel better you can accomplish more i don't care if you never climb a 14er it doesn't matter you're going to accomplish more personally by being fit because your mental process is good. You're going to feel good about yourself and you're putting good stuff in your body and you're keeping your body tuned. Your thoughts guys. I mean, yeah, for, I mean, we, we get individuals who start on the 20 day challenge. They go through it. They love it. They lose 20, 20 pounds. Um, and it gives them a great, you know, head start. And then I will see them ordering that same 28 day challenge or, or I'll see them and they, you know, they, they get back into a funk, uh, you know, or, you know, they, they get back into a bad habit and really it's just that inconsistency. Um, and it happens to all of us. So it's not, I'm not, it happens to me as well. I mean, um, I, 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 I think I'm more, I'm a fit person, but what I have to do regularly is I'm very inconsistent with my diet. And being able to, uh, even for just a person who's trying to uh, get reset, get onto a, a program where you just have to, you know, you know you've been cheating, you've been eating those Cheetos that are, have been, uh, you know, in, in the back of your truck for, you know, a week. You got to get back into, you know, a, uh, into a, a program just to reset yourself. And so I, uh, I do it regularly, even though I don't lose a crazy amount because this is a muscle management program. I'll lose three or four pounds of just fat, uh, maintain my muscle, and then it really just gives me more of an energy and a, um, energy and focus and, and clarity more than anything. Um, but yeah, your thoughts, Nick or Jesse? I don't know which one just responded. Oh, that was Jesse. Um, I think Bruce, you actually, I think Jesse was the one that said it. Um, you know, if you can get past the mental side of things, you know, you use the 28 day challenge. It's a great, it's a great boost. It's a great initial boost. Taking that and learning from it and running with it is going to be the next battle, but you're always going to be battling that one thought inside. And that's just walking in the gym or walking into your basement or wherever it is. You might be working out. You know, the battle is, is, is going, you know, if you don't go, nothing happens. If you continue to not go, nothing happens. But if you can just tell yourself that one time that I need to walk through the door of the gym or I need to walk downstairs and do this, then you've already won for that day. And if you can keep doing it and keep getting those small wins, again, another thing Jesse said that I love, get those small wins, get those small results. Once you get past all the negative self-talk and being frustrated, like I was talking about earlier, and you start getting those positive reinforcement reinforcements going on, then you've got some momentum. Then all of a sudden you light a fire under your own butt. And, you know, there's, there's no better high than knowing that you did it 
by yourself. Yeah, I can't, I can't agree, you know, more on that. It's my son tells me all the time and he, he goes to the gym. He's got his, he goes to the gym because his back's jacked up and by uh, strengthening his core, his, his back isn't as bad. So it's pretty simple. So he, he has to go to the gym or he gets in, you know, his, his back is in trouble. Having said that, you know, he always says to me, he says, dad, just throw your bag in your truck. And he says, would you, you don't have to get up at five o'clock. You don't have to get up at, at, uh, four 30. You, you can go anytime you want. So you just have to go there because, and he, he see me do it. He said, once you get started, then it, it becomes simple because I have an appointment. I got to be at the gym at six 30. I got to be at the gym at four 35 whatever it is, boom, I go there, do my workout, get out of there and get on with my life. And so many times we miss doing that for ourselves. Um, uh, Shelly Grandstead, uh, she, she's in a program, uh, Beach Body Builder, I, I believe the name is. Shelly, don't get mad at me if I said it wrong. But anyway, she has literally transformed herself from a lady that was, let's call it large, and self-esteem and all those things we're talking about. And because she got on a program a regimen and she's stuck with it and she's sticking with it and she's changing not only her body and she wasn't a bad looking girl or lady in the beginning and she's still a great looking lady now but she says if you read her post on facebook she says she feels better she knows she's never going to have to look at that other person in the mirror again and that's strong folks because they didn't she didn't like what she saw but she didn't know how to fix it now she found a vehicle to fix it and all of a sudden She's more confident. She's more self-assured. All these things, and it came from not just losing weight. It came from having accountability. It came having persistence. It came had coming from dedication. All the things that we've been talking about here, she committed to it, and she'll she'll be like that the rest of her life because she she realizes the the dramatic dramatic change she's made in her life. Your thoughts? I think one of the biggest words you just said is commitment. Um, and it's not necessarily a commitment to the gym or the nutrition or the program is a commitment to yourself. You know, you can't start a nutrition program and say, I'm going to do this without actually believing you can. You're not going to start a program to say, I'm going to do this without actually believing that you're going to continue with it. So the commitment part is 100% true, but what people really truly need to understand is that it really is a commitment to themselves. It is something they're doing for themselves, not to themselves. Um, I feel like there's a lot of videos and a lot of, uh, you know, Facebook posts and different things out there that can actually scare people who have never been in a gym, who have never lifted a weight. Um, I feel like a lot of times those kind of things can scare people away when it doesn't have to be like that, but it doesn't have to be, you know, what are they doing to themselves as opposed to, you know, what can I do for myself? Yeah. And I think in social media, a lot of it, look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me. I'm buff. I'm shapely. Exactly. Whatever you want to call it. And then you go, man, I, I'm right now. I'm, I should be 212. I'm 226. So I've got 14 pounds additional my shoulder kicked me in the butt okay i get that but now you know i i look at some guys that i look up to and i go oh I, I know how much work it's going to get back there but guess what it doesn't matter folks because you're never going to be arnold schwarzenegger very few people were because he, he was a world champion okay and if you idolize which isn't a good thing in my opinion idolize somebody say i want oh man he's ripped look at his six pack look at his you know Look at his traps. Look at, oh, he can squat 452 pounds, blah, 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 blah. And I'll tell you one thing. I'd rather go against somebody that runs high aerobic, doesn't have a lot of muscle mass. But some of those guys, and I see them in the mountains, they run 100-mile races. <laughs> and if you were all muscled up, you couldn't do it. Lact lactic acid would bury you. Correct? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. I think Jesse was talking about it earlier because he, he runs around out West and, you know, he was talking about my size. I'm, I'm six foot three. I weigh 260 pounds. Yes, I can lift a lot of weight, but if he took off into the mountains, you can be certain that I'd just be yelling after him. Hey, I'll just, I'll just see you back at the truck. 
because I mean, I, <laughs> me carrying around this kind of weight in the mountains and on the hills and, and things that he would hunt in, it, it just wouldn't work. Um, now here in the Midwest, like that's what my body's good for. My buddy called me the other day and said, Hey, Nick, I need you to come help me move some trees out of my duck ditch. I can do that. How far are we moving it? 10 feet. Awesome. You know, it, it just kind of plays into wherever it is you might be hunting. It plays into, um, how you might be hunting and, um, to look at somebody else and say, I want that kind of body. If hunting is what you do and hunting is what you want. And you look at a guy who is built like me and you want to hike around out West, you might want to think twice because that is my kind of training is not going to be beneficial to you whatsoever. Um, out there, I should, well, I shouldn't say whatsoever, but it's, it's not going to be beneficial for at least a, a real fun, easy hunt. But you can, you can climb a 14 er, but you just have to, I can't, I today you can't, but, you can do it if you came and, and trained, just train with me, train with Jesse. I could get you to the top of 14. -er. There's no question in my oh, mind. absolutely. Because you have the drive and everything. Absolutely. Are you going to be fluid? Are you going to be the motion? Are you going to do those things? No, but that's one thing. I, you see people, you know, I call them flatlanders. I'm not going to say they climb on flip-flops, but their sneakers almost should be flip-flops. <laughs> Or take them off, and they'd be better without without any. But no, go it, barefoot. Yeah, exactly. But <laughs> you think about that, and I think about you know what you do with your body. But all you have to do is just get in an environment. Things would change. Your uh, flexibility would change. All these things. Your eating habits, because you are going to eat more carbs, and you're going to burn them up. Blah 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 blah. But you do all that stuff with somebody that knows what the heck they're doing. All of a sudden, you go, "Wow, I never thought I could be." able to do this and there you are that's my thought. absolutely those are all things um those are all things that we have to think about with a lot of our with a lot of our out-of-state clients is where are they hunting what are they hunting what kind of training do they need and then we kind of go along a pathway um that's similar to that and you know really try and delve into what their need base is um according to you know what and where they're hunting so how are we doing, guys? So are we covering some of the things where we've been on the show about uh, a little bit more than an hour? Um, let's make sure. What are your? Let's start with uh, Jesse with Wilderness Athlete. You know the three big things that Wilderness Athletes provide people, and and then Nick, you can do the same thing, and then we're gonna wrap the show. Yeah, just just one thing, uh, probably more than anything, is that. Um, and wilderness athletes been around for 13 years, and what we provide is scientifically a scientifically based nutrition um, that really is, is quality nutrition. It's not uh, you know a lot of proprietary blends of different things that you can't pronounce the names uh, of it. Uh, nothing. It's, it's very very natural thing um, stuff that's going to help you really prepare yourself uh, for anything, any type of hunt, um, whether that be out in Missouri or uh, getting in a tree stand or, you know, out in the West and you're, you're hiking. So um, it's for, and it, you know, it could, doesn't even have to be for anybody who's, uh, you know, just it, during the hunting season, but it's really just for improving the quality of life um, for, for, for everybody and the longevity of uh, everyone's life and uh you don't with the fda regulations and stuff like that and, and if the regulations i would advise a lot of people um to do their own research in, in in nutrition and try and figure out you know what exactly is going in their bodies and uh find a company uh it doesn't even have to be wilderness athlete find a company that you can feel the results and uh you know you you are seeing, uh, you know, improvements in your mental clarity or your, your body mass or stuff like that, um, to, to go with them. And, and that's the same you said with fit to hunt. So Nick, um, well, I guess probably the biggest thing that I would tell people about fit to hunt, what we can do for them, um, is you know, even when you don't think that your kind of hunting trip really requires much in the way of physical activity is to stop and think for a minute. You know, 
we're no one's getting any younger. Um, we all want to continue to do this over a long period of time because it's something that we love. Um, if you're driving through a fast food restaurant every single day, if you're sitting at a desk every single day and you're not getting out and you're not teaching your body how to move, I'm not saying working out. I'm saying teaching your body how to move, then you're not really doing anything for your future of hunting. Um, and that's the biggest thing that we do is we teach your body how to move. We strengthen it. Um, we teach it all sorts of different things that it can do that it should be able to do, um, to hopefully make your hunts and your lifetime of hunting that much better. And then coupling all of that with wilderness athlete supplements, um, one of the biggest things I say to people about the supplements there, um, Coach P, Coach Paulson said it to me, is we feed our deer minerals and supplements. Why wouldn't we treat ourselves the same way in order to get bigger, stronger, um, and, and faster, essentially? Oh. Yeah. Well, guys, on behalf of Whitetail Rendezvous, uh, podcast listeners across North America, I, I hope some of you guys and gals took this to heart. and. Yeah, I, I'm beholden to both Fit to Hunt and Wilderness Athlete. They're taking me under their shoulder or their wing, if you will, and say, Bruce, you know, you've done a lot of neat things in in the wilds, and, and that's good. But, you know, uh, at seven years old, you know, uh, you eat kind of what you eat and, and this and that. So they're going to work with me, and I can't wait to document this and, and share it with you guys. It'll be up on my YouTube channel. It'll be up on my Instagram channel, Facebook, uh, Twitter, so forth and so on, because I always tell people, if I can do this, if I can transform my body and my my mind, there's nobody on planet Earth that can't, because I'm nobody special. I'm not better than anybody else. I've just been a driven individual that I love to go to wild places and to be go to wild places. I have to be in shape. That makes sense guys. Why don't you give you the last two cents and we're going to call it a show. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. Absolutely. Yeah. Bruce, we're looking forward to working with you for sure. Um, and really getting your insight on what it is that we do at fit to hunt and, uh, and wilderness athlete and seeing how it, it affects your life and, and your hunting. I'm all for yeah, that. I'm excited to see this for sure. All right. Thank you so much, guys. And you all have a good day, and we'll be talking real soon. You too, Bruce. All right. Talk to you soon, guys. We're in now for the next episode of Whitetail Roundabout. We're going to meet up with Quentin Strum. Now, Quentin is one of the main ramrods at Above the Game TV. In fact, he's the pro staff manager. And Quentin tells me that they're one of the very few people that are supported on social media um, for their show. So on Facebook, you're going to find Above the Game. So check it out because they're real people in real places. It's really a unique setup that you can go and watch eight to 10 uh, minute segments on Above the Game on Facebook. It's a pure social media play uh, for the outdoor channels. So sit back, relax and enjoy about the game. Thanks for joining us. Be sure to tune in tomorrow for another episode of Whitetail Rendezvous, where you can listen and learn from the experts so you can be more successful on your next hunt. Until next time, listen, learn, and succeed.